Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. It's already unmuted. Glory to the king. Yeah, it should be unmuted. Yeah. All right. Well, all right, Israel. Glory to the king. Glory to the king. Hallelujah. It's good to have each and every last one of you tonight. Hopefully, hopefully, we won't be here long. So that's what we always say. I don't know how long is long is long. Y'all know the drill. If you can hear me. You know, 10 be the best, 1 be the worst. Let me know if you hear any side tone or interference. Uh, let us know, please. Uh, well, we got the Feast of Weeks. Pentecost coming up the 19th of this month. That's just a few days round road. There's nine more days. And we be on top of another one of y'all set apart more demons. It's Feast Day set apart for the most high y'all. And we thank the Father for inviting each and every single one of us. Hallelujah. Got a few things we're going to cover here tonight, more than anything, but more than anything, try to put a defibrillator on the minds of y'all's people. I'm sure some of you have saw uh, my video, second shot across the bow, trying to challenge folks, and I'm not definitely not going to make this broadcast about that rhetoric and nonsense. But, you know, the sad part about it is, is that now all of them seem to take the posture of being so-called positive after they caused all these lies, drama, and chaos, and everything else. Uh, and what's happening is, is that the chickens is coming home to roost because there's a law that says, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. And so all these smear campaign videos that they don't swindle people into believing lies about me, now it's all backfiring on them. Now they got uh, uh, Ringo TV being a pedophile out there. He's, yeah, yeah. Got, got got evidence on him being a pedophile. Wow. And they coming out left and right. They got they got receipts, so they say. Wow. And of course, uh New Bean is trying to um, do what he can to mitigate his, his you no, know, he's trying to do what he can to get his Ponzi scheme up off the, the ground to deceive a lot of people. I'm telling y'all, y'all move out there with that mess. I I hope you do. I want you all to go get the experience. Please. I hope you do, please. <laughs> I want to encourage you all. I am for uh, UP Farms. Well, UP Farms. Go team, go. Go team, go. Go team, go. As many of y'all, much as y'all can, buy up all the land and everything else. Put all the land, get all the homes, put it out there. Y'all go get it. Go get it. I'm for it. Hallelujah. 100% I am. I just know what's going to happen, but I'm for you. You need that experience in life in order to have humility. And then, of course, that Rufus is out there. I guess he's the, uh, the, the shepherd of the misfits. Now, he's going to take it after paying off somebody named Jamie Plot to testify against us with Ringo TV. Paid him, went and sent him money, and then went and bragged about it in the comments, and Jamie got upset at that. So the wizard is upset. So you got this, this, this former... Uh, um, four or five month old time and grade pastor. He had four or five month pastor, man. That's the quickest one we ever had in the ministry, man. Turn around and, and um, just totally misuse and abuse a lot of people. Now he's trying to turn the flip and flip the script knowing that ain't nobody been misusing and abusing. Are you following me? But now he's trying to go out there and I guess he's going to recruit all you misfits. I want y'all all to go over there and support Rufus Carswell. Y'all get out there and get fun. Go 
Oh, and I want to I wanna make sure y'all y'all post videos so we can watch y'all too. I'm for y'all. Pastor Dow is for all of y'all out there. But it's amazing how they all of a sudden turn tired and turn face. Uh, we're not about the negativity and stuff. We're moving on. You know, let your light shine. All those stuff. What was y'all doing a month ago? I can tell you, slandering, accusing, bearing false witness, the whole breaking Torah, breaking the scriptures, cussing out the scriptures, telling people to rip scriptures out of the Bible the whole night. Y'all, all oh, everything else, man. You know what's happening, right? Because information is coming about all of them. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a time to heal. When you started the wound, <laughs> I tell you, man, the the schizophrenia that ensues from this is all of the proverbial tale. Nevertheless, uh, my challenge still is that. Because like I said, like G Money said, hmm? you fortunate, yeah. I ain't have time, then you? You better, you better be glad I was cool, but today I got time. <laughs> I got time, cuz. You better believe that. When Pastor Dow got time, I told you, man, see, it's kind of like when, when, um, the alleged so-called 9-11 hit America. You know, you know what I mean? I remember Bush said, oh, we, we coming. But it what? It took a couple of years for them to come, didn't it? When they came, they come, they come all right, 20 year war. Hmm? 20 year, a lot of death. A lot of death, a lot of carnage. See, and I, I'm very patient. That's one thing that, that the most high has definitely helped me in over the years is to have patience. See, there's always a storm. Then the storm dies now. Seems like everything is fine. Are right, you following me? And then all of a sudden, here they come. Just when you thought everything was fine, everybody's back laughing. <laughs> Jerry, <laughs> now, now, all the roaches are running for the dark. Yep, that's because they don't want that butt exposed now. I think we done helped a lot of people out, though. But like I said, hey, I'm for UP Farms. Y'all go out there and buy some land. Get out there. Get out there. Now, let me give y'all a little bit of wisdom. And I want everybody, if you're listening, type in seven. If you're listening, type in seven, all right? You know what? The Christians would have had hell with Martin Luther and the Mayflower because they had more beer on the Mayflower than they did water. You know, all you pilgrims. So, y'all heard me make the statement. I want everybody to really truly listen to me very closely. You heard me make the statement about that people really truly don't understand the human dynamic and the dynamic of the human spirit. So I can speak on this because I've been doing this a long time. And it's amazing. When you first come out here, everybody, and you remember that teacher we first got here, everybody was happy. Yes. Everybody was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get out on the land, man. We're gonna work, man. We're gonna we coming together in, in Jesus' name. Yeah, we we working the land, man. We we living out here, we forsaking all blah blah blah. And you know what? The scriptures is undefeated. All you gotta do is just believe what it says. Yeah. How many times that you'll go read in the scriptures that when we get when we're in captivity, we're crying out to the father. Deliver us, deliver us. Oh, send us a deliverer. Send us a deliverer. They sent Moses. That's what he said. He sent Moses. Who are you? Well, I'm here to deliver you. Murmured and complained every step of the way. As soon as the death angel came, Boy, they was glad that they followed the instructions of Moses. No say. And then they heading out of Egypt. Oh, they happy. Hey, we getting out of bondage. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, 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 glory. A few steps out in the wilderness. Ain't been long. It's the human spirit, the human dynamic. Would you bring us out here for the die? You could have stayed in Egypt. But no, you got to murmur. 
y'all y'all remember this right y'all but you got to murmur now you got to murmur hey don't y'all remember the leeks and the onions and the garlic oh boy did we have it so good you forgot you've been dancing a dance in the mud pits making bricks for pharaoh for, for a long time you was complaining then in bondage. In now you're free and you complain. complain. Jesus. And the most high is providing everything for them. They ain't got to do nothing except just move from one place to the next. I mean, the most they had to do was walk. Carry this stuff, walk, do whatever. Yeah. That's all he do. He provided manna for food. He did. Quail for me. Killed a lot of them because they, they were glutton, some of them. He gave him air condition by day. He had the best heat unit that there is about night. Made it so that their clothes didn't even wear out, nor their shoes. Is that not our provider? Y'all were our provider? In other words, he kept he's keeping his end of the cup. What do we do, mama? Now, you fast forward to this generation right here. You think we're any different? What do you think is going to happen when you get all these people that come together with an idea? Calling it a vision. Everybody is excited at first until the human dynamic comes in. It happens all the time on community. We just had, we just had a brother that moved all the way from Sweet. Over the year. And now as you begin to watch it unfold, you can see that he had this plan all along. Because it wasn't even he wasn't even here a good half the time on the mountain he was that you could see the spirit start to turn. Let me tell you all something. Anytime you go to a place, you're going to a place. Not to tell the people who have been there forever what to do, but you gotta learn. You're there to learn. It's, it's true. I got a young man sitting right here that was born on this community. First one, wasn't you first one born? Yes, I'm pretty sure. Yes, sir. Well, you don't know. You were born, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> he was. Yeah. How old are you now? 21 years old. Woo. Born on this community. Human dynamic. That's what you know, I'm telling you. And I can play you video after video after video of the testimony of all these people. Man, y'all bought it to the place. I'm going to be buried here. I'm living here. I'm staying here until the day I'm dying, man. Man, man, ain't y'all nothing that's going to ever remove me from y'all ever. I finally found y'all's people. Come on, Brian. <laughs> and I told you, I've always made this statement. Pastor Dow is right until he gets to you. There comes the human dynamic. Y'all get the human dynamic, right? Human dynamic is you don't know yourself like you think you do. That's why Pastor Dow, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Most High Yah, always tell you, yeah, it warns you of deceivers, but don't you forget the greatest deceiver that's ever lived, you. See, we're always looking out for everybody. What about you? Forget about words. Pay attention to fruit. Anybody can deceive with words. And that's why you're going to see what's going to take place out there. You people, they all are happy. Because they got to have a board to approve of anything that somebody needs to do. That doesn't sound like common unity, does it? Sounds, sounds like tyranny to me. I mean, after all, they want to levy all these charges against us. The way you're running things, they have no, no idea. Yet, and still, I've been doing this for 30 years. Y'all ain't even started. And I got people out there, out there that ain't even never even attempted to live set apart. That's why I can't receive what y'all say because y'all y'all don't mean nothing. I mean, you you, you ain't you have no fruit. All you, you have ever done is provided for you, yourself, yourself, and that's it. You done nothing for nobody else ever. So when they say stuff, it goes in his ear, come out the other. You know why? Because you have no experience. 
You have no knowledge. You have no wisdom. None. So now, when they know that this is right, what's the first thing that Satan want to do? Is try to condemn it and make it wrong so they can make themselves feel comfortable to not do it. But the word still remains the same. It doesn't change at all. And all that believe were together. And we're going to go over some scriptures to show you how much together that the renewed covenant assembly was in different providences under the occupation of the Romans, how much they were together. It's written right there in the very Bibles that you carry. Every time I read the book, I see Israel, be they in captivity or, in, or free, they were together. I remember one time we was having a feast day here, right? It was the damnedest thing you ever saw. It was early on we started feast days, right? We had a feast day. It's about time y'all came around too. So I I, I I sit back for a moment. I look, I say, look at this. The black folks over here all cluttered up together talking with each other. The white folks over here cluttered up with each other. The Puerto Ricans over here and, and the Mexicans, Hispanics, they over here, Cupianos Feliz, uh, Buenos Dias, <laughs> Cape Pasa Homes, all them. Like, so I went and broke up every one of them. Or oh, I went when I broke it up, I went over and joined in. I said, damn, look at this dynamic right here. I said, I thought I'd just come over here and blend in a little bit, brothers. Yeah. And none of them was doing it because they had something in their heart wicked at that time. It's just that they were so culturally familiar with environment yeah. that they tried to bring the same environment here. And so I just went up and started joining in. Just start talking. Next thing you know, everybody starts scattering. You know, to be brothers. Isn't that amazing? And if you think you can put confidence in the flesh of what you call your own people, you have lost your mind. You have lost your ever loving mind. But most of you don't believe it. So you need to go and experience this human dynamic. Get out there and go do it. We we're for you. 100%. 100%. All right, I, I think Pass's uh, feed froze up. Now, nah, uh, the stream's good. It's just Passer. Uh, we're going to, if we have a commercial, let's run a commercial. Join Patreon with Pastor Dow to get all the unfiltered truth. If you like what you see, support the work of the ministry using Cash App or PayPal. Be sure to tune into Blog Talk Radio with Pastor Dow. Be sure to tune into the Shabbat message with Pastor Dow. All right, y'all. The computer went down. Uh, they're booting it back up. So we'll, uh, we're going to continue running this commercial. And uh, just stay tuned. We'll be back on soon. Join Patreon with Pastor Dow to get all the unfiltered truth.
If you like what you see, support the work of the ministry using Cash App or PayPal. The only one that can make you whole. Hallelujah. Spirit, body, and soul. Hallelujah. Be sure to tune into Blog Talk Radio with Pastor Dow. Be sure to tune into the Shabbat message with Pastor Dow. Head over to www.straightwaynetwork.com to be connected to the Straightway Business Directory, products and services, and live feast day itinerary updates. If you want to know more about the Straightway Truth Ministry, visit www.straightway.com. Join Patreon with Pastor Dow to get all the unfiltered truth. If you like what you see, support the work of the ministry using Cash App or PayPal. Be sure to tune into Blog Talk Radio with Pastor Dow. Be sure to tune into the Shabbat message with Pastor Dow. Head over to www.straightwaynetwork.com to be connected to the Straightway Business Directory, products and services, and live feast day itinerary updates. If you want to know more about the Straightway Truth Ministry, visit www.straightway.com. Join Patreon with Pastor Dow to get all the unfiltered truth. If you like what you see, support the work of the ministry using Cash App or PayPal. Be sure to tune into Blog Talk Radio with Pastor Dow. Be sure to tune into the Shabbat message with Pastor Dow. Say, head over to www.straightwaynetwork.com to be connected to the Straightway Business Directory, products and services, and live feast day itinerary updates. If you want to know more about the Straightway Truth Ministry, visit www.straightway.com. Join Patreon with Pastor Dow to get all the unfiltered truth.
If you like what you see, support the work of the ministry using Cash App or PayPal. Be sure to tune into. Bless ya. Anyway, so we got we we have all these different dynamics. What you do? We got all these different dynamics today, where everybody's trying to reinvent the wheel, circumvent the wheel, and then the wheel the wheel is no longer working. The wheel is still working. The wheel is still fine. Have y'all noticed that as long as the invention of the wheel has been around, they haven't replaced it yet. The wheel is the wheel is literally done stood the test of time. Now they made improvements on the wheel, like such as you know rubber, yep. and but but it's still the same concept. It's still round. You don't see nobody running around here with square tires. Well, how we coming in, everybody? How we coming in? And now I got to figure out. I got to see if I can pull up uh, my little notes I had. See a word. Doesn't crash on me because I didn't say nothing. That ain't no big deal. Well, but it ain't there either. Um, nope, it ain't there. So we're going to go off of what they call the hip. Go off the hip and go from memory right down memory lane. Hallelujah. But I'm sure that everybody can comprehend and understand what I'm talking about, right? Y'all can, y'all can get this. And again, there's been so many people that start off down this path and start off down this road. They do. And they forget. Matter of fact, they can't forget what they never experienced. They have no idea about this human dy- dynamic. Everybody, I'm telling you, they look really good. They look really, really good. They look really nice, really good. Uh, and then after that, hey, it's over with. It's it's just totally one hundred percent over with. And and I'm gonna tell you right now, Israel, it's gonna be a bad bad thing when you don't listen to wisdom. You know, the book said that one man by his wisdom, he was able to deliver a city. One man. Now everybody wants to be that man. Now, I don't mind if somebody else come along and be that man, but at least have some fruit, have some anointing or something. Because, you know, did not Moses have to prove to the Israelites that y'all sent him? Yes, did I just say something wrong? Yes, sir. I'm going to say it again. Even though Moses was the chosen and called of the Most High God, Israel, did they not still require proof that Yah sent him. And then look all the hell they still gave him. Not all of Israel now. You had righteous Israelites. They they got it. They were good. Went on into the promised land. Well, the the two did. But you know what I mean? The good ones. But then the the, the bad ones, man, they they were checking out early. They were getting stoned on the devil. They were getting ran through with swords. They were dying and plagued. I mean, um, people just... And and we're you think about this. Could you imagine? Could you imagine and listen, listen, the book teaches us. I'm jumping thoughts here. Listen. The book teaches us that in the book of Luke, we need to pray that we be accounted worthy to escape all these things that are getting ready to come up on this earth. Now, how many of us is actually praying? Pray that we'll count in word to escape all these things. Could you imagine if you put straightway the Hebrew Israelites, Ringo, New Bead, Rufus Coswell with his rebellious ass? Could you imagine you put all of us in the wilderness? What would happen? You know, Revelation chapter 12. You know what's going to happen, right? The same thing. <laughs> And it says that all these things are written for admonitions. What about some of you? 
What about some of you? Would you be ready for the wilderness experience? Would you? You don't think that there's a propensity in you to murmur? You don't believe me? Are you murmuring now? Why is it that some of you women out there, you wives, have such a hard time submitting to your husbands? Do you not know that you're going to be judged based on your role? I don't care how right or how wrong your husband is. You're going to be judged based on your role to be submissive, obedient, agreeable, help me. Be a good mother. Love your husband. Love the children. Guide the house. But why would you want it to try to do anything other than that, which is outside of a reason why the purpose you were created? Why would you want to be why would you want to be tempted to try to lead? When you've been created to help. You get out of your role, you're going to make a mess of stuff. How hard can this be? Well, you don't know him. Yeah, I do. You did. You know him. You picked him. You said, yes. 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 My soul. It says yes. Yes, husband. I say yes. I'll submit. Yes, husband. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. to cook your food. Yes, husband. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. to hold you tight. I will be your rest in the middle of the night. <laughs> I know you've been out fighting all day long, but you ain't got to do it when you come home. <laughs> I'll be your peace in the midst of the storm. <laughs> you lying ass Jezebel. I'm telling the truth, man. You damn hypocrite. You don't think you're going to be judged. And then you men, you get married, you get married. Oh, oh, I'm going to take care of you. And your lazy ass won't even lift a finger to get dirt up on your hands. you already in breach of the contract of the covenant agreement if you don't provide food, clothing, and marital rights. According to the book, if you don't provide food, clothing, and marital rights, that woman can go out free. Is that what the book says? That's that what the book says. And that's not mentioned um, abandonment and desertion. You already done broke the contract. You done breached it. She's free. Because your sorry ass won't get out there and provide. You're supposed to be the provider. See what I mean? Everybody wants to breach and break these roles. And you think you're going to go washing with your rebellious self right into y'all's kingdom when you couldn't live it here right now on this proving ground, this testing ground, this trying ground. Y'all yes, better hear this preacher talking here tonight. Because people, I'm telling you, they got words, boy, they got words. I'm telling you, ask everybody when they come to community, man, I want to be on community. Do you? Do you? You do. How in the hell you want to be on community when you don't even want to be on your job? Did I say something wrong? Because one thing about being on community, y'all ass going to work. <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. Past now, we come here and listen to the broadcast. That's why you're here. I'm trying to help you to understand the dynamic of the human spirit. Hallelujah. And see, some of us have never been faced with this living together in common unity because what does the book say? Iron sharpens iron? Yeah. You don't realize if it's iron sharpens iron, that's two hard substances. And that means when two hard substances come together, that's friction. And when that's friction, there's heat. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Huh? Woo. Over a period of time, it's going to get pitted. You know, pit one against the other. See, uh, but see, all you're seeing is the, the glamour and the glory. I remember me and my East, we was down in the DR, and we got to talking, and, and um, of course, some of the things you've heard before. I mean, you out there ever were in the goodness of your heart. Now, that's what you think. I'm going to say in the wickedness of your deceived, ignorant heart. But you're going to say in the goodness of your heart, Father, I know I need help. Please, Father, please, grant me patience. Show me how to be a patient person. And in your mind, your heart of heart, in your goodness of your, now here you go, Pastor Dow, in your wicked, deceived ass heart. <laughs> but see, then you get mad at me for saying that, though. In your patience, you possess yourself. Let patience have a perfect work. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Huh? You get it. man. And then the first thing that comes in, it's amazing how when you ask for stuff like that, it don't take long for that prayer to get answered. It don't take days, weeks, months. It comes licking his pants just like that. It's like, man, you talking about an answer prayer. Remember, if you ask anything according to my will, he said, I'm going to give it to you. And we all need a bowl of patience. And how do you get it? How, what happens when you get patience? You're going to get something that's going to come right in front of you. Call, yeah, call it a test. A trial is going to try your patience. How many times you failed? If you have, you just got finished asking for patience. And if you notice, the more you fail, the more tests, the more trials come. And it keeps on coming until you finally just wake up. Some of you got the gall, the gall to say to Father, listen, Father, I just got finished praying to you and asked for patience. Then the Holy Spirit say, what do you think you get? Right. How in the hell would you know what patience was unless you've been tried? You got to learn how to have great joy and great tribulation. And right now you don't have the patience for it. So we got to, you know, I'll give you exactly what you asked for. <laughs> See, your heart that you believe that was so good and your intent, that's your another part, your intent, your intent. It's, it's, y'all don't look. His ways is not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are higher than our way. See, when we pray, we have something in our mind that's communicating, and really what we're trying to do is tell the Father how to be the Father to us. Rather than sitting down, shutting up, and learn how to receive instruction. We want to tell him, just download us some patience, just like you downloaded the Morpheus in, in the Matrix. Or Neo in the Matrix. You know what I mean? I won't be an MMA star. Just download it in my mind. Automatically. Now you see the reason why. See, you have deceived yourself into thinking yourself to be something when you are nothing. You got it in your mind. Man, man, I, I, mean, I know, I know my heart is good. No, it ain't. The book says your heart is evil. And it is Desperately wicked. And only him can know it. So that's why he tries it. <laughs> did, did I just say something wrong, Israel? Did I say anything wrong here tonight? But see, you you asking for patience. You think you done done something worthy. Most people ask for it, can't handle it, and then they throw in the towel and go back to the world. Back to the weaker and beggarly elements of this world. Because you couldn't hack it. You could not hack the sanctification process. Get Hebrews 4, 5 real quick. You could not hack the sanctification process.
If y'all still there, type in three, please. If y'all still there, you see what I'm talking about now? You see what we get it right? Hmm? Oh, Pat, I ain't never thought about it like that. Pat down, Pat down, see, Pat down, I'm in Pat down my shut up. Read, teach. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remains that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Y'all hear that? Yes, sir. You got a rest you got to enter into. But you can't go in because of unbelief. See, here's another dynamic of unbelief too. You believe, but your belief is unbelief. But you want your belief to be the belief so you can change the whole, whole dynamic of heaven. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling y'all, man, that is the human spirit. And that's the reason why people can't live together. Because see, what's done happen? I can't tell you once. If I said it once, I said it a thousand times. People come out here with expectations. They, they come out here, man, eyes bigger than mine. I mean, spotlight golf balls. What's the big eyed deal? I mean, I mean, they are there. And boy, I, you watch after a while, no deliverance, no prayer, no fasting. Start separating, start declining and declining. Next thing you know, they separate themselves. Why are they here? These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. How would you know that unless they were with you? They got to be with you in order to separate. See the work? See the work? See the man? I'm telling you. Hey, man. Y'all, man, somebody should be saying thank you, Jesus. Somebody should be saying thank you. Let him that have the ears to hear, let him hear. Mind you, I've been doing this pretty much the majority of my life. The majority of my life, you come in, you got, you got, one to five years, one to ten years under your belt, and you know more than I do. You ever seen people talk to you and they have to, they're telling you every damn thing? You just sit there and look at them. And you know they don't know what the hell they're talking about. And they think you're listening. Now, you're listening to that radical bullshit to see how deep this spirit is, but they think they're really ministering to you. And when it's all said and done, you go, go be a peace, bless you. And they think they've done something. They really truly believe that. Man, you know what? I'm glad I was able to give them some wisdom. What world you in? Come on. A wise man know how to keep his mouth shut and close until after the matter. Over here, silence is not a consent to agreement. I don't know who told you that, but it don't work like that over here. Answer a fool, do you? No, uh-uh. You don't do it. Foolish and unlearned questions. What do you do with them? Boy. Why? All they're gonna do is keep on strife because you know many of you. When you don't get the answer you want, you rephrase, reform. Yes, you do the question because you're thinking you're gonna some way, somehow give more revelation to the person if they could just see it your way. Then maybe you would have changed. I heard you the first time. Well, maybe you ain't hearing me good enough. You go again. You make another attempt. You still get the same. But maybe, just maybe. <laughs> it sounds like I've been around the block just a few times. Just a few times. Been around the block just a few times. Ignoramuses. You see what I mean? And, and, and mind you, you, you done done something. Y'all think y'all learned anything about patience yet? I'll tell you what, when people get out there on UP Farms, they're going to learn something about patience. Because some of you are getting ready to make that move and get ready to cut off your eternal soul. Some of you, somebody has got to put the and fit the dynamic. If any man put his hand to the plow and you look back, what did Lot's wife do? She looked back. What did the angel of the Most High told him Lot's wife not to do? Told all of them, don't look back. 
Don't look back. Why? Because wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If any man put his hand to a plow and look back, he is not fit for the kingdom of God. You know, over the book of Romans, it actually gives us the power to excommunicado or excommunicate someone out of the assembly. If they get excommunicated out of this assembly, you don't think that the Most High God has given us power to judge matters to excommunicate you out of that one? Well, you ain't in control of soul salvation. I'm just telling you what the book is giving us. We're talking about ecclesiastical authority. Uh oh. Y'all just take stuff lightly. See, it's hard for y'all to believe. Oh, we read about Moses, yep, and you would have gave him hell too. You'd have gave all the prophets hell, yeah, you would have. It's hard for y'all to believe that y'all does have real men of y'all set apart in this daytime and hour right now. And you know what? The same way you do with us, the same way you'd have done with them, but you don't think you would because your heart is deceived. Because he's going to ask, he's going to say the same thing to you. I sent my servant to you. Sure did. You know, when you heard his voice, yeah, you yeah, you really was hearing mine. I'm the one that drew you. He can't draw nothing. Yeah, that's my servant. I anointed with the truth and the word, and my Holy Spirit drew you, and I told you to come over and listen to him. Well, well, why? He ain't everything I all thought it all cracked up to be. They didn't think Moses all he cracked up to be once he took that Ethiopian woman too. Man, he Moses had character flaws in a Roman mindset. As soon as he took that Ethiopian woman, boy, you know the people start quoting law. They started quoting law on him. Guess who just gave him the law? Guess who's the custodian of the law? You gonna tell Moses what the law is when he spoke to y'all face to face? What the hell is wrong with you? They ain't even come so close that your own family think they can talk to you any old kind of damn way. <laughs> I tell my my Easter's all the time. Listen, I'm gonna help y'all out. I want y'all to be extremely careful how you speak to me and how you talk to me. I'm telling you that for your own reasoning and your own, for your own health sure. and your own spirituality so that you don't experience a lot of heartache and a lot of pain, sure. a lot of death and destruction in your body. Because sure. the Most High Yah is not going to let you get by. If he ain't going to let these people get by if they're talking against his servant, you in my house, you ain't getting by. Sure. So watch your heart diligently. Watch your speech and your mouth diligently. I talk to him like that. And then you know what's going to happen. You're going to have all this shit in your heart. Next thing you know, you're, you're hurting like all over the place. Then guess who you want to come pray for? Baby, can you pray for me? Oh, you don't say. Didn't I just tell you don't do this, don't do that, but you did it anyway? And you wonder. And then what do you do? You do just like the rest of the heat. You start justifying the reason why it is like this. Could have been that pancake I ate the other day. <laughs> well, the pancake doesn't die dressed and then went off into the damn draw. We're talking about a week later, you still were hurting. Amen. Uh, listen, Israel. Y'all's a man of war. We are warriors. And there's always, always. The first order of business is they ain't nothing from without that can destroy us. Only that which is within. Nothing without is going to trouble us or bother us. A lot of times we actually got to say a lot of things, do a lot of things just to preserve some of you weak minded people. Because you know what? Some of you, you have no loyalty in you whatsoever at all. At the first sign of distress, the first sign of temptation to try. You forget yeah. where y'all led you. You forget where y'all called you. Yeah. You forget the spirit that y'all put up on you. Yeah. And then you start siding with the enemy. You become double-minded, become two-spirit. You're full of doubt, full of shame, guilt, condemnation, wow. uncertainty. You don't know what. Well, I don't know now. We're just going to sit back and, and we're going to watch. Watch what? Wow. You've been sitting back all these years. Sitting back. Back. Like I said today, 
Could you imagine here's Elijah mocking the false prophets of Baal and stuff? In this generation, I wish Elijah would lead them to hell alone. They started it. Elijah wasn't the one trouble in Israel. Israel's already in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think he told the prophet Isaiah, cry out and don't even spare. Yeah. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show the house of Jacob their sins. Yeah. Yeah. Told Yezekiah, yeah, listen, if you want a wicked man to turn from his sin and he don't turn from his sin, he shall die in this iniquity. But you have delivered yourself. And you won't have no blood on your hands. Don't that sound like us today? Where in the world, where in the angels of time have we ever changed as a people? Where? Got to the point that the Messiah said to the scribes and Pharisees, which of the prophets did you not kill? Which one of them? In other words, the very mouthpieces of God. When you kill the prophets, you, you was actually wanting to stone and kill y'all. Oh, but we love y'all. Why are you trying to destroy the messenger? Yes. Come on. The message would never be destroyed, so stop destroying the men who carry the message. Yes. You put one down, y'all going to raise up another one to get on your damn nerves. Oh boy. Uh well, Pastor, I don't like the way you talk. I'm telling y'all, y'all get out of this translation shit and go read Elijah words from the original translation. You're gonna change your mind real quick. You're gonna say, Man, Pastor, you pretty damn merciful. You know, we something else as a people. We are, we are, we something else. Go to Ecclesiastes in the in the New Testament 118. I think that's what I just pulled up. Please ask us 118. Let's go to the next dynamic here before we move on. We break down the dynamic of patience. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't ask for patience. You need patience. That's a, I mean, I, people tell me all the time, Pastor, you are the most patient man I've ever met in my life. I've been forged on the battlefield. I told you, this is the way we think. Oh, there people come to, man, I'll die for you, man. I'll die for you. Why would I want you to die? Dying is easy. Living is hard. Then they said, man, look. <laughs> How about the type of dying you do is die to yourself daily so you can think That's like y'all. So we can live until Messiah. Yeah. That way you'll find out one day Pastor Dial is not here to trouble in Israel, not the ones getting on your nerves. You are already having nervous problems. Yeah. See, Pastor Dial, there you go again. I know there I go again. Keep going. There I go again. Keep going. Ain't gonna keep on going. <laughs> Read it, please. That's 118, man. Or in much wisdom. Now, that's the next thing. I talked about that too down there. How many of y'all said, Father, I need wisdom? Father, can you please give me some wisdom? You pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. Anybody ever done that? If you prayed for wisdom, ask for wisdom, type in seven. If you prayed and asked for wisdom, and that's all you want because, I mean, got to have wisdom, man. Wisdom is the principal thing. Yes, it is. First thing. First thing. That's what it says. Now, finish reading. For in much wisdom. For in much, much wisdom is what? Is much grief. So if you want wisdom, get ready to experience a hell of a lot of grief. And I'm going to tell you right now. Now, I don't think there's another man on this earth today has experienced more grief than I have. You know the reason why? Because I live with the saints of Yahweh. I live with Israel. I don't talk about it. I'm not doing like Farrakhan and all the rest of the Hebrew Israelites telling y'all this wish up on a star and a hope on a dream. We need to come together. We need to come together. 20 years later, we need to come together. You know why everybody waiting on somebody to do something? Because they ain't got the anointing or the direction to do shit. 
We need to come together. We need to come together. Look. If you're led of Yah, you're going to come together. Yah's going to bring people who's ordained to eternal life to come along to help him to work. It's Yah's work. What do you care if you're the pitcher, the catcher, you're on first base, second base, third place? What, what do you care as long as you're on the field? Oh, never mind. Never mind. So I'm talking about? Everybody can't be the head coach. And some of you still believe that Elijah went up in the chariot too, remember? <laughs> so if you get wisdom, that means with all, and most of y'all say, Pastor Dow, you're the wisest man I've ever met and guess how much grief I've experienced. And he says in much wisdom come what? Much grief. And what else? And he that increases knowledge. And if you increase in what? Knowledge. Do I not have a lot of knowledge? Yes, sir. Uh, do I not have a lot of knowledge? Yes, sir. But why are y'all's people destroyed, though? So, if I've increased, just like the book said, in a lot of knowledge, what did it say? You increase sorrow. So, guess what? I've already done been to the place, and some of you ain't even been yet. If I'm giving you the knowledge, you should thank the Father. I've already done burned the oil to be, and you don't even have to experience. All you got to do is receive the engrafted word of y'all, which is able to save your soul. Yes, but no, you want the experience of dynamic? Have at it. The labor. <laughs> Have at it. Don't let me get in the way to make you happy. If it, hey, if it makes you happy to be sorrowful, go ahead and have at it. There's a whole bunch of it around. You need all you can get. But you better hope that it doesn't wear out the patience of the saints. You better hope that what you ask for, it don't take you out of the road, out of the out of the faith. There's been a lot of arrogant. Egotistical, self-willed yes. people who believe that they're all of that and a bag of chips. They believe it until the test comes. You won't find out who you are. Some people say, Pastor, you're the most humble man I ever met. Some people say, Man, you're pretty damn arrogant. Which one do I take? Which one do I receive? I mean, it depends on where you're at. <laughs> you can't have it both ways. I, either I'm arrogant or I'm humble. Which one is it? Uh-oh. See what I'm talking about? All I'm doing is just trying to help y'all think the way that y'all tells us to think. So there's a lot of people that have yet never experienced a human dynamic, but you will. Yeah. If you're going to embark on doing what this book says, and it does say it, Go look 1433. Get ready. Get ready. If you're going to prepare yourself for the kingdom, y'all never deceived us. He told us there's no discharge in this war. No. He told us, you better get ready, soldier. <laughs> and most of you think, oh, I'm. Oh, I feel so much joy. Anybody feels joy when you graduate and you accomplish something? Now you're trained. You don't get to go back to nothing. You're trained for a purpose. The purpose is to get your ass out there on the battle. <laughs> Good. That's like when you go up into different tiers in the military um, and you start going up in different skills, skill sets and stuff, right? Um, they think that, well, I didn't graduate, everything gets easier. No, I don't. The standard always goes up. You don't you don't get to you don't get to do like the supply sergeants does. You don't get to have a ceiling and be a cook because you can only go so far as being a cook. You're probably gonna cook the same meal a thousand times. You understand what I mean? They may have 15 different meals, up, but that's that's the ceiling. That's, that's as far as you can go. They don't have no ranger school for cooks. What the purpose is you to go to ranger school to be a cook? There's no 18X, no 18W, there's no 18 contract, special forces spoon. 
For what purpose? You see what I'm saying? But once you have done all that training and stuff, it don't you have to keep yourself and maintain that level of standard and commitment. You can never let it slip. Just because you go and get tabbed out, you get all these damn um, um, scare me badges, me badges, and all this other shit. I mean, you can have all kind of badges up here, and everybody walk around and see, ooh, wee, ooh, ah, ooh, 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 ah. But when you go to a post where everybody got it, they know who we are. <laughs> y'all seen that picture of me with, with uh, all those legs, straight legs around me, and I'm the only one y'all to break. I got my airborne wings and aerosol wings on, man. I walk around the break. Everybody on the post. Ooh. People buy me drinks and everything else. I'm in, I'm in a school. Way across there just, just to learn something more about my job. A school, right? I don't consider myself better than anybody. It's just that I signed up for more bullshit. You understand oh, what I mean? They get paid more to do it too. You understand what I mean? But they look at you like, wow, like you're a little mini god. If you're on a post, man, and you got a red, a maroon beret on, and everybody else wearing damn baseball caps. That's what they were doing, man. You stick out like a damn soap on my promise you. And everybody in the military know. Because they say Kate is about to step, but they hardly ever see them. And when you start seeing them walk around, you go, what the hell? And there's a difference because we always look fit. Because we all fit. <laughs> we ain't like the rest of them leg units. Everybody run around looking like pigs and pot belly pigs and walk. I'm serious, man. They're just a total different. Quiet. The job is different. I'm going to tell y'all. Y'all has chosen you. Oh. In his army to be a good soldier. He ain't going to drop the standard for you to go back and be comfortable with being a damn worldly imp. He expect more holiness, more righteousness, more set apart. Yeah, he does. He is invested in you, a lot in you. He's not going to turn around and just make things easy for you because you've not graduated a certain area in your life. Boy, the way we think in this world, huh? The way we think in this world. Somebody say it's good broadcast. Real. And that's the problem with many of you. You don't never ever look to improve in life. The book puts a curse on you that I'll ease inside. I was talking to y'all at the at the at the kitchen table at my table today. Y'all remember what I talked about today? Yeah, at, at, at dinner. Man, I talk about a very profound subject at dinner today. I'll let y'all meditate on it for a little bit. I'll bring it up. Yeah, you're sitting at the couch, but you're still in the damn house. Here we go. That's called justification. <laughs> Any of y'all sisters remember, y'all better help them out. So, I'm sitting up here looking at a generation who believes that once they get born again, get filled with the Holy Spirit, they ain't got nothing else to do. Nothing else to do. I'm like, now, wait a minute. The most I has done nothing but continue to keep improving me year after year after year after year after year. Remember, I told you as a man, you should always be learning. You remember me telling you that? You got people that will fight against that because they're comfortable at being mundane. You should always be improving on yourself. You always be learning, never become stagnant. Because if you don't never continue to keep learning, you're dying while you're yet living. Remember, remember, there's no labor in the grave. Nope. Labor ceases. Come on. 
Yeah. And then some people, well, that's just the way y'all in the military. Man, I all like I said, man. Oh, so somebody they, they tried. So I mentioned this is how wicked these people are. I told you I've never met none of these people, but I heard of some of the exploits they did. I don't give a shit what they done. I just heard what they did. I know what they A. A. Allen, Jack Cole, William Brenham, all them. They've done more than these damn people making videos today. The majority of people out there making videos has never healed one damn person in the name of the Messiah that they say they called on. They have never been filled with the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? They have literally no power at all. They've never ever performed one miracle, one sign, or one wonder. Not one. You know what I mean? And I got thousands of witnesses to see everything I ever talked about. All praises to the Most High Yah. Because without him, we can do nothing. That's why I make my boast in him. You say you of Yah, but I ain't seen shit from you. But a bunch of mouth. The scribe and Pharisees had that. And man, look, this man right here, he do miracles. What do we? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> you sure know how to wear them teachies, though. You know how to broaden your phylacteries. Yeah. So you get all this wisdom, or you ask for wisdom, and you never ever once bank that sorrow is coming your way so that you can know what wisdom is. You never ever think you're going to experience grief. I'm still experiencing grief to this day. I experience grief because of how dumb and ignorant y'all's people are. Even with all this preaching and teaching, most people, this is what happens every Sabbath. We're there for a moment, in the moment in time. And we're like, hallelujah, glory to the king. And when it's all said and done, we go eat and we forget about everything ever said. No study to show yourself approved unto y'all. A work with that need or not be ashamed, but rightly divine the word of proof. No meditate on that word day and night. No, nothing, no, nothing. We just there and then we move on. Check in, check out. That's it. And then we wonder why. Why ain't y'all using me? I wonder why. I wonder why. Well, somebody please tell me then. When you figure it out, please let me know. That's my number right here. Leave me a note. So I get all these people that speak against community and not live one day for anybody else but themselves. Teacher, they forget that when we start this community, when we start this community, and y'all seen all the people sitting around that the, uh, uh, we was having assembly outside by the creek. Yes, sir. Everybody didn't contribute to that. We did. Yeah. <laughs> and y'all talking about worrying about if we taking somebody money. How can you take what somebody give? Right. I mean, you people falls. Now, I'm telling you right now, they're they trying to take you for everything you got. But give it to them. Trust in these people that ain't got a track record. Have y'all forgotten that we told you that when you seen that video of, of us the other day from 2000. I mean, from 1998 to 2008, when I put my first video on YouTube, no, none of y'all knew nothing about me. We were mind our own business, doing our own thing. We've been out here. And by that time, we had already built the church building. Yeah. We done purchased that land. Yeah. We had already built the dining hall. Yeah. We had already built the fellowship hall. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We had already set every single one of these trailers. Yes, sir. Built the cook set oh, and the shower house. Oh, yeah. Yes, did yeah. and set greenhouses, yeah. set up fence for pasture and stuff, yeah. raised cattle. Yeah. Man, I had a pond up here we dug oh, out and stuff, man, and chicken coop. <laughs> All that we did, and nobody knew nothing about us. We, we were having faith and having it to ourselves. Yeah. We show up. Mm -hmm. And people were still, even way back then, calling us a cult. You think it's something new when I come online? Y'all gonna call us the same thing? We've been hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Ain't a cult. Your sorry ass mom and daddy who ain't serving y'all. <laughs> or you. Come on. <laughs> your mom ain't shit. Your daddy ain't shit. And you ain't shit. Yep. <laughs> mind you, it, mind you, before there was any internet, after the internet, yeah. we were doing this by ourselves, yeah. minding our own business. 
this. Growing gardens. Yeah. Big gardens. Yeah. <laughs> That's why, man, thank the Father that we had the mind to put a few pictures up. Now y'all bring y'all brings other faithful Israelites in to help in this labor to become part of it. And y'all think that's a light thing what y'all done with you? Mm-hmm. Y'all didn't bring you into this just so you can kick the trace and get a case of the ass and not have no patience or uh-huh. wisdom and then leave. Yes. No, you put your hand to the plow and you made an agreement. You made a covenant. Yep. Now, the only thing you got to do from that dynamic is look back. According to the word, you ain't fit now. Not for the kingdom. You see, I, I can't stop what I'm doing. My life is, was over the day that I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He says, you no longer your own. You've been bought with a price. Yes, By the precious blood of the Messiah, Yahshua, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You are a servant. Yes. You different nothing from a servant. How in the hell am I going to tell him what to do? I'm here to do what he says. Yes, sir. How do you know? By their fruits. Yes. You shall know them. See what I'm talking about? Yes, Forget about what the hell I'm saying. A lot of people, look look at Rufus, man. He told y'all a lot of shit. Then you go look at the work you've done, done in 10 years. You can find out, nah, uh that ain't it. I don't know why I suffered him that long, but I guess I got to run the course like everybody else. But you can tell he ain't do shit. You can tell too by looking at him. Morbidly obese. He did a lot of eating now. Did a hell of a lot of eating. Y'all get it, right? And did not God say in Psalm 78, did he kill the fattest of them? Oh, by the way, let me answer this to you. Let me digress and answer. So somebody said, Pastor Dow, how can we build muscle and lose weight? I go, now, if anybody wants to hear this, type in five. If I get 55s, I'll talk about it. If I don't get 55s, I ain't going to talk about it. If I get 55s, if I don't get 55, we ain't, we're going to move on. We're moving on. Hey, 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 uh, Deacon Sammy, let me know if I get 55s now, because if not, I really don't want to talk about it. I'm talking goddamn blue in the face. I am not trying to sign in no damn TV. I don't know if I got 55s yet. And I didn't say 55, I said 55s. All right. Did we reach it yet? Did we reach it yet? I think so. I think we passed it. No, you had to be the bearer of bad news, wouldn't you? <laughs> All right, here it is. I want everybody to listen to me. All right. Everything is about calories in, calories out. Yes. Now, the problem is when people say they want to lose weight, they're talking about taking inches off their body. They don't care how this weight comes off. They don't care if they lose muscle. They want to lose the fat, but they don't care if they lose muscle. Are y'all hearing me? Yes, sir. Or water. So people go on these stupid fasts, these yo-yo diets, and all this old other shit. There's one way to stay consistent, and only one way to stay consistent. If you're going to, listen, if you're going to build muscle, then you can't be losing weight the way that you think it is Come on, by starving yourself, yeah. having your body cannibalized. Because yeah. soon as you starve yourself, the very muscle you've been working to build, you get your body getting ready to eat. Yeah. Most of you, you go on these crazy, stupid ass diets and wonder why that everything returns fast. You know the fat and the water and everything else because you're not putting no protein, no food into your body. The problem with Americans is, is that you eat, first thing you need to do is you need to cut out a little bit at a time the bullshit you eat. 
Yeah. Oh, see, never mind. Yes, they done dropped off right there. It's over with right there. Little small changes. If you do what I tell you within within 12 weeks, three months, you'll be totally 100% surprised what happens. Totally 100% surprised. Now, I'm telling you what I do. You know that it works. I can be as defined, muscular, or as fat as I want because I know exactly what I'm doing. Now, listen to me. You're going to have to exercise. You're yeah. going to have to weight train and resistance. Yeah. You're going to have to. And don't cut out eating. Somebody say don't cut out eating. Don't cut out eating. Cut out eating. Well, past that, I'm going against the keto diet. The hell with the damn keto yeah. diet. You are Americans. You're not used to moving. Come on. Don't cut out eating. Weight lift and at least walk 30 minutes a day, five days a week. I said, what I said, walk. And I'm not talking about strolling either. Start off at a little pace, just a little pace. If you're using a treadmill, put it on one and just walk. You ain't got to run and jog and get out of breath and then knock yourself out. Just move. Somebody say move. Just move for 30 solid minutes, five days a week. Cut out more junk the next week. Eat food. 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 Good food. That ain't cookie, cakes, prize, ice cream, dairy, all those. Other. Well, Pat, now you eat ice cream, I sure do, but you don't look like me, though. Do that, what I just got been telling you, work out at least an hour, three to four days a week, walk five days a week, at least 30 minutes, cut out the junk in your life within three months, you wouldn't believe where you'd be at. You wouldn't believe it. And drink plenty of water. But whatever you do, don't stop eating good food. You're going to need that food in order to maintain muscle. And when you're walking, it's something crazy that goes on. You see, most of you believe that you lose fat when you out there sweating. <laughs> no, you don't. You lose fat by breathing. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Why you think we tell you to move? <laughs> I don't believe that, Pastor. I keep going. I believe not, but you believe all the other shit, though, isn't it? It ain't working. I just got finished telling you the truth. But see, what you Americans do is you keep eating and you don't move. You come set it there. You keep moving. You keep eating, keep eating. And the only movement you do is from the house, 10 steps to the car, from the car. 50 steps into the grocery store, grocery store to the checkout, back to the car, back to the house, and there's all the movie you've done all week. If you would do what I just got finished saying, within three months, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. That includes all you people that go on these stupid ass diets where you fast yourself half to death, and, and you, you need to fast now for the right reasons. You don't need to be fast because you look at well, somebody say, oh, you look good. So you're doing it for y'all. You're looking to see get the limitations of people. Y'all know the damn wickedness of your heart. Just do what I tell you. You won't believe it. There you have it. Now, if you appreciate that answer, type in one. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Also, if you learn, man, muscle would actually help mitigate a lot of problems in the body. That is no, you don't need to be running around looking like no bodybuilder. No, I'm telling you, listen, 
I am on no steroids, no nothing, never have been, never will be. Are oh, you following me? I don't look like these bodybuilders. You've seen bodybuilders, right? You can tell they on rollers, man, because you cannot, I promise you, you cannot get, you cannot look like that unless you are uh, enhanced, taking some serious drugs. Yeah. And by the time you get in your 40s and 50s, you better not be taking this shit. <laughs> your heart ain't designed to take it. You better not be taking that shit. Anyway, so I answered it. What was I back on? Wisdom, right? So wisdom come much sorrow, much sorrow. Now, just do what I ask. I mean, you ask, you typed in five, you, you, I guess you engage. I just got finished giving it to you. You wouldn't believe what's going to take place with you. And, and listen, if you're going to drink like this, drink like Pastor Dow do on the Sabbath. Every other week, blog talk or whatever it is. When you work like we do, man, I, man, I'm so damn tired. I got to hit that bed. I ain't got no time for no drink. I ain't got no time to get my drink on, man. I'm going to sleep. Oh, you know what I take at night when I'm going to sleep? I give me two magnesium pills. Got to have magnesium, man. By the way, you want to learn how to lower blood pressure too? start taking some potassium. Potassium and water and magnesium at night, man. Take care of you. Y'all should be paying me for all this. Y'all go pay these damn people all these damn apps deceiving your ass and every damn thing else. Go looking on YouTube, looking at people. <laughs> and I'm trying to tell you straight up what it is. Ain't nobody want to listen in. Now, one of the greatest things you should learn out of this is don't stop eating food. Did y'all hear that? I did say I didn't say it, but right. I just said you just start cutting bad shit out of your diet. Yeah. Yeah. And you wouldn't believe what will start happening. Lord to the king. Woo. All right. So I do need to say this. And everybody needs to comprehend and understand. Y'all do know that these these scriptures versions, these Bibles we got today, these are. Y'all know that Christianity is a European religion. I'm going to say it again. Christianity is a European religion. I'm going to say it one more time, Israel. Christianity is a European religion. If we really truly want to be more concrete about what books we should be reading, we should be really looking closer to the Ethiopic version, the Ethiopian version, because they got like eighty-one books in their in their in, in their scriptures, and the Europeans, what well, we got sixty-six. Look at that word, sixty-six. The Ethiopian uh, assembly transcend American or, or let's say Roman Christianity by how many centuries? Ethiopia is one of the names you can read from all the way in Genesis up to now. You can't read America? Damn! <laughs> so you, we got to start asking ourselves a question. Who in the hell are these damn people that decided to take the scriptures and then remove books because it doesn't suit their culture. Yeah, you're right. And notice, I keep trying to tell y'all, how many times I told y'all that Rome has never stopped ruling? Ever since Messiah, Rome is still in control. I'm going to say it again. Rome is still in control. I'm going to say it again. Rome is still in control. They, they went from political to religious. Why do you think it's called the Roman Catholic Church? Why do you think all the Protestants who's supposed to be protesting, they follow everything the Romans do? <laughs> to the T, they do. 
They may disagree with mama on a few things, but for the most part, they follow mama. Anybody ever heard of pseudographica? Anybody ever heard of the Septuagint? Yes. All these books were included in the pseudographic and the Septuagint before, before the Europeans got a hold of the scriptures. See, you're going to find the book of Enoch in the Ethiopian Bible. We got to ask ourselves, since the Ethiopian Bible is oldest, what has happened to us in our mindset that we, it's not even, it, it don't even enter in, we don't even want to read it or hear it. Don't y'all think we need to be doing that? Asking questions? Asking real questions? The books of the Apocrypha were written before the Messiah came on the scene. If you're a wicked ass nation and you see that these prophecies talking about you, why in the hell would you want to sit up there and keep that book in your Roman religion? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I keep telling you, Christianity, yeah. again, is a European religion which we should bend down to divorce ourselves. We don't know that shit. Jesus was not a Christian. Never. None of the apostles were Christian. Never. How the hell could they be Christian when it didn't come about until the third century? That is true. Well, Pat, you grew up like this. Yeah, I grew up, but then I got filled with the Holy Spirit. That's right. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Come on, bring the king. Man. That's the kingdom. Pastor, you just against European. Why would I be against you? Listen, I'm just trying to state facts for y'all. Yeah, true. You know what? Yeah, whenever y'all hear me or see me breathe or sigh like that, you know the first thing that comes to my mind: How long am I going to suffer this generation? Grief and sorrow. It is. It's grief and sorrow. It's that. Go ahead, teacher. It's damn so grief and sorrow, man. I'll be like, wisdom and knowledge. I'm sorry, folks. Y'all think I'm gonna mess y'all when my time is up, man? Y'all are shit. <laughs> damn. I'll be like, You know, I was thinking this week, I'm digressing. That means I'm getting ready to digress, but I'm going to still be on point for those of you who ain't been around for a while. So I started thinking, was it the Midianites or the Assyrians? Let me go over the scripture real quick. I think it was the Midianites. Oh, man, one of them. There it is. And let me tell you something. There's not a day that go by that Pastor Dow don't read scripture. That's all I say that. Mm. It ain't numbers. Oh, that ain't nearly either. Oh, maybe, maybe I'm in the wrong chapter. Let me go back to numbers. All right. We're going to go over to numbers 31 real quick, all right? Numbers 31. If y'all listening, y'all know I, I ask us to type numbers, right? So this generation don't know how to spell. So I just try to keep it simple. Thank you. <laughs> said, thank you. Thank you. He gave two thank yous. Listen. I think it's very important that we hear this, though. All right, let's go to Numbers 31. First verse so we can get a look. And I'm going to have you skip down, okay? Read on, teach. 
And Yah spake unto Moshe, saying, What did he say? Avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. Of the who? Midianites. Avenge them of the Midianites. Come on. Afterward shall be shall you be gathered unto your people. Keep reading. And Moshe spake unto the people, saying, Arm yourselves. And you see, that's another scripture right there, right? It, Moses told it with most I said, Don't you go? And then Moses said, Do what? Arm some of yourselves unto the war. You hear that? Arm yourself for war. Huh? Today, people say they think you, you fighting and stuff with words. Anyway, come on. And let them go against the Midianites and, and avenge the master. Of Midian. So you avenge Yahweh of, of Midian. Is that right? Now, here's the dynamic right here. Listen, verse 4. Watch this. Of every tribe, a thousand. Y'all get that? So how many tribes are there in Israel? Twelve, Twelve tribes. So you're getting ready to put uh, together 12,000 men to go to war. That's a serious contingency right there. I mean, y'all want these people destroyed, right? Read on. Through all the tribes of Israel. Y'all hear that? Shall you send to war? Y'all hear that? Yes, so you need a thousand men out of the tribes of Israel, each tribe, to go to war. That's 12,000 men. Read on. Go there. We're delivered out of the thousands of Israel. Come on. A thousand of every tribe. 12,000 all for war. All for war. Y'all get that? Yes, sir. They ready for war. Verse 6, read. And Moshe, Moses, sent them to the wall. A thousand of every tribe. Them and Phineas, the son of Eliezer, the priest, to the wall. With the holy instruments and the trumpets to blow in his hand. Verse 7. And they warred against the Midianites. As Yah commanded Moses. And watch this. And they slew all the males. Stop! What, who did Israel slew out of many nights? All the males. Killed all the males. Every single one of them. Not one male left alive. You hear that? Yes, sir. Go to verse 8. No, no, no. Go to verse 9. And the children of Israel took all the women of Midian captives. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear this? Read. And their little ones. Come on. And took the spoil of all their cattle and all their flocks and all their goods. Y'all hear that? Keep reading. And they burnt all their cities wherein they dwelt. And all of their goodly castles with fire. And they took all the spoil and all the prey, Ooh. both men and of beasts. Boy, they, they, they going in, ain't they? Yes, ain't they going in? Yes, they going in, right? Skip on down to verse 14. And Moshe was wroth with the officers of the host, with the captains over thousands and the captains over hundreds, which came from the battle. And Moses said unto them, Have you saved all the women of life? Oh, you hear that? Have you saved all the who alive? Women. All the women alive. Watch this. Read on. Behold, these calls the children of Israel through the council of Allah. That's why I tell y'all, can't be out there mixing with these Christians, man. They're counseling y'all to serve another Yah. Who we have not known. Any of these wicked ass women out here. Are you following? Keep reading. Don't want to spoil it. Don't watch this. To commit trespass against the Elohim in the matter of Peor. See, so this is what whoredoms and fornication is about. Is laying with women that serve other gods. And having children with them. Watch this read. And there 
was a plague among the congregation of Yah. Now, verse 17. Listen very close, Israel. Now, therefore, do what? Kill every male among the little ones. Now, this is women. Now, mind you, they've already killed all the males, grown men. Now they're killing males amongst certain women who had male children. Read. And kill everyone. That what? That has Every known, woman that what? That has no man by laying with him. Y'all hear that? If she wasn't a virgin, kill her too. Of the Midianites. Y'all get it? Yes, sir. Now we get to a point. Read on. But all the women children that have not known a man by lying with him, keep alive for yourself. Keep alive for yourself. Now, wait a minute. This is Moses speaking out of the auction of God. Yes, sir. You don't went over here and I ran blitzkrieg on this nation, then destroyed them, and Yah is telling Israelites, but the women, but the women's children would have not known a man by lying with him, keep alive for yourself. Don't this sound like war? The war bride? Don't this sound like it? Yes, sir. The war bride, right? Yep. Watch, read on. And do you abide within the camp, without the camp, seven days? Whosoever has killed any person, and whosoever has touched any slain, purify both yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day. So what is that saying? So if you go to war, Israel, and you was able to keep some women of them captives, mainly virgins, they have not known man. Are you following me? And they had no no damn children by these by whores. You get it? Now they're yours. So all these people out there to tell you that we can't be mixing with other nations are damn liars. Yes, That's it. It just gives you certain types of the people of the nations you don't be yeah, fooling with. Yeah, yeah. You don't ever talk about you can't, you're a black man, you can't marry no white woman, you're a white man, you can't marry no black woman. Bullshit BS. Why don't they ever bring this stuff up? Come on. See what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. But y'all see what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. And then what are you going to do about the war bride over here? It's obvious that you see a beautiful woman once the captives you can take up. And Israel had the nerve, starting with Miriam, to bitch against Moses. For Marin and Ethiopia, you see around we around most high y'all was on them like a two ton every stick. Right. On them. Yeah. And here we are sitting up here under <clears throat> European Roman Christian teachings, having trouble with what y'all's already laid out from the beginning in scripture. How yeah. this wicked mindset. Is it not sad? Ah, so what were we at before that? I had a thought up in here. Oh, going back over to the churches real quick. So, by the time we remember, because when Yahshua came up on the scene, we were still under Roman occupation. Y'all should have been dead and gone for 2,000 years, at least the physical part of them. 2,000 years, we're still under Roman occupation. That is true. And I told you, you know we're under Roman occupation because all these nations are confederate because every single one of them fly the eagle. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thereby showing you they're part of Rome. Yes. Yes, sir. And they all just have to be European nations. Yeah. Oh, never mind. You know, this is how deceived we are. Y'all ready for this? So you got the Chinese and the Japanese and the North Koreans and South Koreans thinking that they're all different people when they're all the same damn people. Yes, 
they are. You got the Mexicans and the Puerto Ricans thinking that they're different people. Y'all the same damn people. And y'all warned you, I'm Puerto Rican, you motherfucker. I'm like, hey, you Come people, y'all, that's, yeah. something, that's something wrong with y'all. That's some semantics, sir. Damn. You got these melanated folks, man. All of us come from the, the coast of Africa. All of us pretty much been mixed around yeah. like that. All of us have. Yes, come on. And man. we sit up there talking come about, on. nigga, who are you? I'm from the, 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 the from the. I just say by ever loving hey. You all look alike. Come on. <laughs> you get it. How the hell? Listen. What is wrong with y'all? Listen. What yes. is wrong with yes. y'all? Father, please help us. Yes. Please. I'm telling you, man. Nation, it's nation. Yes. This is not crazy. Come on. And you got this national pride because they gave it to you because you were born on a certain flag that they gave to you. Can you tell the difference between a Chinese and a Japanese? I can't. I don't see them both. I can't tell the difference from East Nashville and nigga and a nigga over here that they still a Negro. Yes. I just know my eyes is like acorns and eyes. They can barely see out of them. <laughs> Shit. Oh, so true. Boom. Man. <laughs> well, Pastor, how you know where you descended from? Are you serious? Look at his nose. That's some breathing passages in it. That nose come from a very hot climate. Look. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah. You gotta get some air in there. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, we saw we are something else. Yeah. All this flesh pride and stuff. Why don't we just get with the book and just thank y'all? Yes. That is bought us out of this darkness into his marvelous light. Right? Yes. He told you got people out of every Tongue, every tribe, and every creed. Yes, we so damn mixed up down. This is and stuff, man. Only he who knows who we are. Yes. That's why it says that y'all know them that are his. Yes. He gives you his Holy Spirit. Yes. That's the defining point. The seal. The seal. Yeah. Who, out of which um, New Breed and Ringo, they ain't got him. They ain't got him. Mm -mm. Rufus ain't got him. He said he got but he ain't got him. Think about this. So when we get over here, let's go to Romans. Let me make sure I check this out. I'll fact check this real quick. So we see that after the death, burial, and resurrection of Messiah, the apostles, not only we already, you know, we don't ran no scriptures so to people tired of them. They actually hate the word. All they believe once again. Ah! Manifested. Oh, I, we didn't do a uh, Luke 14, 33, right? Go ahead and quote that real quick while I pull this up. They, they, they hate this hearing this word so much, it start manifesting. And what are we going to do, Israel, is my question. When you can tell that everything's done change, that we're going to end up being together, and we got all these people, that did not want to put the time, energy, and effort in to help develop the land, help develop us as a people, help store food, do all this other stuff. Because when the proverbial crap hit the fan, man, those that are out that are on the outside or with the off land and stuff, they got to come here. We got to stack up like hard sardines because we got to have a police force. We got a security team. We got to have uh, our suits got to be able to. Can you imagine they got to be able to cook, man, and do everything on all their duties and stuff? And they got to have armed guards around him at all times. We got to really come together like Israel. We better change this wicked mindset. Read, teach. So, likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsake not all that he hath. Uh, 
Saturday for us today. That is what the book says, though, is it? Read on. All that he has, he cannot be my taught one, my disciple. Y'all get that, right? So Yahshua ain't changed his mind, right? So let's go over to Romans chapter 16, verse 3. Well, I knew it, man. I thought it was going to be not long. Well, it probably, we'll make it. We'll make it. We'll get these right here. We'll make it right for now. We'll be good to go. Everybody enjoying this broadcast, yes, though? Sir. Yes, sir. If y'all enjoying this broadcast, man, type in two. Meaning out of the mouth of two or more witnesses. Tell us the I think it's an excellent broadcast, man. I think Israel learned a lot. That's pretty good for not having no notes up here. We just now getting ready to get in the notes. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Romans um, 16, verse 3, read. Read. Priscilla and Aquila. My help us. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So you mean Paul had helpers? Yes. And Messiah. Is that right? Yes, Keep reading. Who have for my life laid down their own necks. Here, babe. Now, now, now look, notice, these were the type of helpers that they have literally, for Paul's life, they laid down their own necks. You know why? Because they knew he was a messenger. Read on. Unto whom not only I give thanks, but, but unto all the assembly of who? Of the Gentiles. You mean to tell me that the Goyim's got assemblies? <laughs> the Goyim's got assemblies? Uh oh. What the Hebrew Israelites gonna do with this thing? Uh oh. We got problems now, don't we? Boom. Somebody doctor has got a bunch of holes in it, man. Come on. Straight up. Verse five. Likewise. Greet the what? Greet the assembly that is in their house. So where's the assembly at? In the house. Where's the assembly at? House. So the assembly is in their house. Isn't that something? And what does it say in the book of Acts chapter 2? They went from house to house, breaking bread, and in fellowship and in prayers. Isn't that amazing? And this is what they want to keep y'all from. They want to keep y'all from it. They can't practice it right now, but they think they're going to be able to practice it when you get out into a piece of land or wilderness. No, no, it's, it's something wrong. Read on. Salute my well-beloved Abednego. Epinatus, who is the fruit fruits of a chaos unto Messiah? First Corinthians 16, verse 9. Y'all write these down, all right? First Corinthians 16, verse 19. Excuse me. So we see in the house, right? And these are assemblies of the Gentiles. Why? They're in Rome. Right. Yeah. Come on. For your obedience. It's come abroad unto all men. First Corinthians 16, verse 19. And where we at? We're in the what? We're in the providence of Corinth now. Corinth was a place in Asia Minor. Come on. To the assemblies of Asia. So oh, wait, wait, wait. I thought Asia was way over on the other side. Well, how the hell can Corinth be Asia when Asia's sitting right here and not over that end? What's going to happen? Because Corinth is sitting over here. Asia's over there. But he says, the assemblies of Asia salute you. Come on. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in Messiah. With the assembly that is in their house. Where's the assembly at? In, in their, their house. house. Uh, and what do you say in the book of Acts again? And they continue. They. The one accord. And they went from house to house, breaking bread and in fellowship. And then served y'all with gladness and singleness of heart. But y'all was with them. Is that right? Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 wow. And then people want to speak against community where you can go from house to house. Now, let me see. You can be out in these housing communities. Nobody say nothing. All these compounds, these gated compounds y'all got out there. If I'm, nobody said nothing. You got to peel a cold in. Yeah. You feel protected by one little, little thing. <laughs> and you get up on Christian Sunday morning. 
Y'all get that right? European Christian Sunday morning to go worship the venerable day of the sun. And you checking in and you think you done did your work. Because you're going to church. See, out here in Christianity, they got you thinking that if you go to church, you, that, that equates salvation. You need to come to church. Come to church. All you're doing is just going to one of them glee club or one bingo club to another. It has nothing to do with salvation. Oh, my reader, you got my reading? You got it. Yes, sir. We're going to go to Colossians 4.15. Colossians chapter 4. Now we're going to the assembly of Coloss, right? We have it. Go ahead and read. It says, salute the brethren, which are in Laodicea. Uh-huh. In Memphis. Uh-huh. And the church, the what? assembly, which is in his house. What? So we are following the New Testament. They're not meeting in a conference room. They're not meeting in the auditorium. They're meeting in houses. Well, Pastor, now nah, where are you at? Well, we're on the Sabbath. Where we at right now? In the house. Somebody said, "Well, y'all, 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 y'all got a church about? We never called that church now. One time, don't you start lying on us? All that is is a big old house to house all the people to be able to house us." On the same land in Lafayette. Isn't that something? So salute the brother which is in Laodicea and Nippers and the assembly which is in their what? House. Are we beginning to get the picture? So the problem is, is that, now mind you, these people are in captivity, not a one of them got any damn land rights. You know why? Because they're in captivity. We had land rights when we were free. How the hell are you going to get land rights when you're under a, another occupation of another entity? See, these people, oh, I'm telling you, man, that's why they don't never want to have these vigorous discussions, not with somebody like me, because I see right through the smoke screen. And they want to be out there to be able to pat each other on the back and continue to keep deceiving you and make you feel good in your deception. Y'all hear me? Trying to make way. Well, I, I I thought that the way it was, but it, I don't know if it's that way now. I just if you're whatever y'all tell me, so you're gonna go to a bunch of them people that ain't even living the book, ain't got his Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden they supposed to be the one to guide you. We some sick people, man. That's how you know the devil has entered in. And then here I am, a man telling you that. We got 95% of this 101 acres exempt without 501c3. Well, how you do that, Pastor? Go ask your pastor. Well, he don't know. Go ask your pastor. But he don't know. Go ask your pastor. Because I ain't giving you shit. <laughs> I'm burning the oil for Israel, not you. Is that making sense? And once I get this done, then I'm going to the next community and the next community and the next community and the next community and the next community, and the next community to free y'all's people. Well, we y'all's people. No, you ain't, no, you ain't with us. You ain't. If y'all y'all's people, then, then go to your pastor. Come on. <laughs> is that Come simple, on. isn't it? Yeah. What's wrong? He said, I would give you shepherds, plural, according to my heart. And you got a shepherd that, hey, he's leading, he's guiding, he know what he's doing. Go to your shepherd. Come on. Go to your shepherd. <laughs> Don't come bother me. Well, you ain't the only one. Go to your shepherd. <laughs> I ain't got no problem with it. Uh oh. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, how I love Jesus. Mm. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, hey, wait, wait, wait. Well, yeah, I'm singing to JC. Who the hell are you singing to? Because whoever you singing to, they don't answer. You get no healing, no deliverance, no salvation. No who you singing to then? 
<laughs> we can't be this stupid now. That we can't be this damn dumb. You're right, Pastor Muir, but don't worry about it. We got you. Because as soon as we get this thing locked down, you next to be free. All these communities, y'all next. You know why? Because they got a shepherd in front of them. Yes. Uh-oh. And damn it, if it's going to, look, if it's going to took me up and y'all anointed people in my path and way and stuff, if it's going to take me 26 years to get to this, you think it's going to turn around and give it to your ass so you can trample it on the feet? No. So you can take the credit and not give y'all the glory? No. Only this is only for straight way. Well, we got see where you at, who pastor you in? Pastor. Your pastor. Who edges <laughs> of the field are you gleaning? Uh huh. Don't let me get started on this now. See, see, we already we don't we don't took off on it. Well, anyway, we got one minute. Sorry, we'll talk about it. Y'all didn't still didn't come up with it though, did you? Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, I'll get it for you. I'll get it for you. I promise I will. I already got it, but you ain't getting it now because we up against this short time. I told you it's going to be short. Man, we got one minute. Everybody enjoy the broadcast. Let's give all praise to the Messiah. Let's edify this. Told you we weren't going to stick with that mess. No, no, no. He won't waste all of y'all's time on this bit. No, no, no. I've got to feed the sheep. Feed the sheep. Hope y'all learn something, though. Learn, learn a lot tonight. See, this is the type of broadcast that you need to be going back and listen to again and again and again and again. Listen, to Israel. We are here to build his kingdom. And we are the sheep of his pasture. He is the one that has purchased us, Yahshua, by his blood. And we are different for nothing from service. As a matter of fact, we're bond servants. And in this, we have to realize that that is our lot in his life. We give up our life in his life so that we can live life. You don't think the one that, that knows everything has enough wisdom to let us know how to navigate to get through what we're getting ready to go through right now so we can be able to enjoy eternal life? And then Satan wants to tell you, do as you will. You call this anyway. You, I tell you what, I'm gonna keep on serving the king. Yeah. Oh well, it said repeat mode. You got that right. This has been a great broadcast. Very edifying. So with that said, we're gonna see y'all tomorrow morning. Be the Father's will, and I believe it is the Father's will. Uh, man, we are having all kinds of stuff going. I got computers, man, that sound like they're about to blow up. I told teacher, you better take that one out of here, man. That thing is in here, man. I just, it wouldn't even turn off on regular old regular way you turn it off. I finally just go back and unplug the thing, man. But one thing about that computer, though, that thing is over 15 years old. That thing's still running. They don't make them like that no more. They don't. That thing's still running, too. This damn thing right here is already losing. See it? Hey, it's below the black mark. It's been the same level for a while. Yeah, but it was at the black mark. I'm going to say, where is it going? I know it's going to the bottom of that damn trade. Down there. That's where it's going. So where did that, what happened to that then? It's been like that for quite a while. That, that space. But it was at the black mark. Don't you start. I see this thing every damn day. I look at it meticulously every day. I agree with you. It's been at that point, but it started up here. They're going to have me marking black. Imagine mark around that damn thing. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Hey, Israel. Hey, we love y'all. Truly do. Um, Listen. Y'all stay real with y'all. Stay close to them. All right. We're getting ready to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. Man, it's going to be a wonderful feast. Good to see the Israelites again. And for that, we thank the Father for again. Hallelujah. Um, y'all be encouraged. 
See y'all tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. That is our wish. Y'all sleep well. Get some good night's sleep. We've been having a lot of rain down here. Yes. I mean, thunder, man. Sound like two shields are cracking right on top of you. And you know what I do? <laughs> you know what Summer do? About to jump out of a damn skin. She comes from California. She ain't used to that stuff. She about to just crawl up. Pow! The thunder is, man. They just, everybody, I'm like, yeah. it goes, pow! And I go, Hallelujah. I guess it was kind of fearful there, huh? It feels good, though. Starting to get a little bit hot here. Hey, bless y'all, Israel. Y'all be encouraged, all right? So, Shabbat Shalom, Israel. We bless y'all. Sweet, precious, strong, victorious, and mighty, overcoming name all soon coming king. Y'all sure the Hamashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the king, is coming. Uh-oh, look at him looking.